Hey, good morning, Year 5. If you've seen our packs we sent out, you'll notice there's a pirate theme, so we've kept our spag lesson today with a slight pirate theme. Now, our first spag lesson, we're going to be looking at homophones today, and particularly the homophones of there, there, and there. Quite easy homophones, but they're very, very easy to make mistakes. So we're going to have a little look and find out some lessons and some tips we can use to help us know which one to use in the correct sentences. Now, just to start off, we've got some sentences that have got missing punctuation and incorrect spellings, and we're going to try and fix them. So, on Tuesday, Captain Hook chased Tinkerbell as she screamed, help me, Peter. Okay, so we're going to start from the very beginning of the sentence, and we know the sentence starts with a capital letter, and we've got that. And we've got the word Tuesday. Now, the word Tuesday is a proper noun. Proper noun for the name of the day. So we need to change that with a capital letter. So it's on Tuesday. Captain Hook chased Tinkerbell as she screamed, help me, Peter. Now, we've got our inverted comma here. However, Captain Hook chased Tinkerbell isn't being spoken. So we don't use that here. We don't need that just yet. Also notice that Captain Hook is the name of a pirate. So we need to make sure that the C for Captain, because that's his title, has a capital letter, and we also have a capital H for Hook. So on Tuesday, Captain Hook chased Tinkerbell. Again, we've got a name here, but the name of the fairy, Tinkerbell. So she's going to need a capital, capital letter. So on Tuesday, Captain Hook chased Tinkerbell as she screamed, help me, Peter. Okay, so as she screamed. Now that word screamed gives me a clue. It's a verb for said, so I know I'm going to need to use some inverted commas. As she screamed, help me, Peter. So we know that our um, inverted commas go the start of the speech and close at the end. Now, help me, Peter. Still a couple mistakes there. So I'm going to capital H and a capital P because Peter is his name. Okay, so that's the first one done. And we've got two more to go through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try these two on your own. And then in a bit, once you've finished them, press play again and you can see and we'll go through them together. Okay? Okay, now before we go through the answers of the Lexi questions, I've just realised I've made a mistake in that first sentence. If you've noticed it, come on, shout at me, tell me what it was. Well done, you were correct. Silly me. Hopefully, you were able to correct me and notice and spot my silly mistake. Let's get on with the next question. So I'm just going to change my colour pen. The skull and crossbow flag rippled in the wind. However, the pirates run frantically on deck. Okay, well we know every sentence needs to start with a capital letter. Something we need to make sure it's always in our head as we seem to forget it occasionally. So. The skull and crossbow flag rippled in the wind. However, the pirates run frantically on deck. Now, we've used an ampersand here. We've used that and, which can be used in a lot of text language. We want to write it out when we're doing our right written work, so I'm going to change it to the written version. The skull and crossbow flag rippled in the wind. However, the pirates run frantically on deck. Okay, so notice this word wind at the end is spelt incorrectly. So we need to get rid of that Y and turn it into an I. The skull and crossbones fly rippled in the wind. However, the pirates run frantically on deck. We've got a great conjunction here. However, however, it doesn't quite work with this sentence. When you use that conjunction, it normally suggests something different is going to happen, something opposing or oppositional to what you've just said. The skull and crossbow flag rippled in the wind. The pirates ran frantically on deck. The skull and crossbow flag rippled in the wind. The pirates run frantically on deck. They could actually be nicely joined together 
without that oppositional conjunction, I think a better conjunction to use would have been as. So let's try that one. So, if I write that above here. The skull and crossbow in the flag rippled in the wind as the pirates run frantically on deck. I think that sounds a lot better and it actually makes a lot more sense. And however, as I'm sure you can see now, didn't quite work. The skull and crossbow in the flag rippled in the wind as the pirates run frantically on deck. Ooh, haven't used the correct tense there. It actually needs to be the pirates ran frantically on deck. Okay, and that last one. As the waves crashed upon the boat, the pirates searched for their treasure map. As, we know, needs a capital letter. So as the waves crashed upon the boat, that's a lovely front of verbial. So as the waves crashed upon the boat, the pirates searched for their treasure map. Oh, that's the homophone we're focusing on today. Have I used the correct there? That apostrophe shows me that something's been omitted, so it should be. They are. So let's read that again and see if that works. The pirates searched for they are treasure map. Oh, I haven't used the correct one there. I'm just going to rub that one out. It is, in fact, belonging to them. So I need to use this spelling of there. We'll go through the next slide how we know that is the correct one. So, as the waves crashed upon the boat, the pirates searched for their treasure map. Can't forget my punctuation at the end, my full stop. Okay, give yourself a couple of ticks, see if you got it right, see if you got correct, and well done. Okay, so we've got our three homophones for the word there. Got there, there, and there. Now, I found a little trick that helps me, and I'm gonna share it with you in case it helps you today. Okay, so I'm looking at the three different there's. Now this one, I know, means it belongs to someone. I sometimes think of the word heirloom, or heir, as belonging to something. But I also saw a little trick where you can turn the eye into a person. Okay, a very, very bad looking sick person I know. However, that reminds me, oh, it belongs to that person. So it belongs to the eye. With this one, as I said earlier, you've just got to remember the apostrophe. The apostrophe in this case has been used for omissions, we've got a contracted word. They are. And now my final there, I always remember is, it's not here, it's over there. And you can even see the word here in the homophone. And you can write it if you're like me and prefer visuals. So you can see in the text, it's not over here, it's there, and that helps me. Let's see that then if we can use these clues to help us with answering some questions. Okay, so we've got some sentences here that need the correct version or the correct homophone for there. The pirates look for their ship. Now, it's their ship, so it belongs to them. I'm going to use this there, and I'm going to remember my little person. It belongs to that person. So the pirates looked for their ship. It belongs to them. We can check the others. The pirates looked for they are ship. Doesn't quite work. And the parents looked for, oh, it's not here, it's over their ship. Doesn't quite make sense. So you know it belongs to them. It's their possession. You're looking for either I did it, it's their heirloom or that person, that version of their. Okay, I'm going to show you two more. Let me just move down a little bit. So, the pirate with the peg leg found his parrot over there, hiding below deck. And Long John Silver exclaimed, There! Over there! As he stopped the enemy. Now that last one was a little bit trickier. 
So I'm gonna pause the video and have a think about what versions of there it might be. 